Coming up on Forecast Earth, environmental changes can create monumental challenges. The sea level rises. Tornadoes are incredibly destructive. Drought was the catalyst. Learn how we adapt to a changing planet. A changing environment can change the job landscape. Save the polar bears and pookie too. Meet a man who believes green jobs are the way to fight poverty and pollution. And still another challenge to our environment is what to do with all our trash. You'd be surprised how much we throw away. There are over 750 million used cell phones in the United States alone. Hear tips from our outdoor expert on how to recycle and reuse. Discover our climate challenges and learn how we can meet and solve them now on Forecast Earth. Hello and welcome to Forecast Earth. I'm Natalie Allen. At no time in history have we been in a better position to predict and plan for the future in terms of climate change. Why? Technology has made it possible to forecast how a warming planet may affect us in the decades to come. And with that knowledge comes the opportunity to adapt to the changes ahead. Just what are those challenges? Here's a look. Oh. From the barrier islands of North Carolina to the sinking wetlands of Louisiana, erosion is subtly yet dramatically grinding down our coastline. Coastal erosion, our first challenge. To give you an idea how much beach that we've lost over the last couple of days, I had to use an extension ladder to climb down onto the beach. A map from the U.S. Geological Survey shows that our entire coastline is susceptible to erosion, the areas in red being most at risk. Orrin Pilkey is an erosion expert from Duke University. Global warming and especially sea level rise is an impending disaster for our society. Even the most conservative predictions call for sea levels to rise more than a foot this century. The government expects sea level rise will cripple our infrastructure of ports, roads and rail lines. Pilkey says the good news is that it's possible to adapt to coastal erosion. I view it as a pretty exciting challenge. The solution is expensive moving rail lines, roads, and buildings away from the danger zone. But the high cost of adaptation may be less expensive than dealing with the aftermath of a catastrophe. Do it now in a planned fashion, or do it uh, later in a, in a catastrophic or emergency fashion. Moving out of the path of erosion is one thing. Moving out of the path of a tornado, like one of the record 138 that struck in February, is another. And it's our second challenge. 1,100 students took cover as their classrooms and dorms were being ripped apart. Winter is tornado season in eight southern states, sometimes known as Dixie Alley. But Dr. Greg Forbes, the severe weather expert at the Weather Channel, says there's a strong possibility Dixie Alley may become a thing of the past. This year we had tornadoes up in the mid-south, well to the north of where they typically occur. Tornadoes thrive on the atmospheric instability created when warm air from the Gulf of Mexico ventures north and mixes with much colder air at higher altitudes that's being driven eastward by the jet stream. In a warmer environment, the opportunities for warm moist air to get farther north seem like they'll increase. Up to 17 additional states, that's 115 million people, may need to be prepared for winter tornadoes. But the future will also bring more technology to help people adapt. The goal, and this should happen in the not too distant future, is to take the best science and the best technology to create an advanced early warning system. Since 2003, the Weather Channel has had a system of phone call notification for severe weather in your area. And experimental new radars are five times faster at scanning thunderstorms for tornadoes. This isn't a tornado, but it is an example of what Westerners see almost every summer when fire season starts. And it is our third challenge, more wildfires. Wildfires are most likely to happen west of the 100th meridian. It's sort of a tinderbox dividing line for which part of the country doesn't get the Gulf of Mexico moisture that can keep fire conditions at bay. The Scripps Institute of Oceanography says that in the last 35 years, more than half of western fires and 70% of fire damage happened in years when the snowpack in the Rocky Mountains melted earlier than average in the spring. 
climate projections for the next 25 years show an increase in conditions that lead to these western wildfires. So the USDA Forest Service is already adapting to this increased threat of wildfire conditions. Its strategy is to remove the kindling that fuels the fires. And the Forest Service has decided that when no structures are threatened, wildfires will now be left to burn themselves out. The most easily understood effect of climate change is that some places are going to get warmer. In densely populated urban centers, this could spell catastrophe. It's our fourth challenge, heat waves. So far, more than 40 people have been treated for heat-related illnesses. Jerry Meal, a climatologist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, says what makes heat waves so deadly is that nighttime temperatures don't cool off, so there's no relief from the heat. Well, the Chicago 1995 heat wave uh, after three consecutive nights where it stayed really warm, in other words, it didn't cool off overnight, that's when people really started to die in that heat wave. That Chicago heat wave claimed more than 600 lives, and climate models show that the number and the intensity of heat waves will increase, pressuring the electrical grids that power our air conditioners. So today, an area like Chicago may have one to two heat waves in a given summer, in 50 years, Chicago may have two to three heat waves in a given summer. And the heat waves they have may be more intense when they do occur. Cities like Chicago are starting to adapt by reducing the urban heat island effect with new and retrofitted reflective rooftops and rooftop gardens. Higher temperatures and less precipitation are the ingredients for our fifth and final challenge, drought. And while drought can and does strike other parts of the country, one region is particularly vulnerable. When you think about drought-prone regions of the world, you think of these places that are already on the edge with respect to water resources. And in the U.S., there is no better place to think of than the desert southwest. Seven western states rely on water from the Colorado River, which has been severely depleted after an eight-year drought. Cities like Las Vegas are having to adapt to the possibility of more frequent and longer droughts in the future. We have not only embraced conservation, we have really catapulted it forward by decades. As Lake Mead sinks, Las Vegas is adapting in part by recycling 100% of its sewer water and participating in a project that stores water underground for future use. And there's now an alliance of eight major water districts lobbying the federal government for research that will help them manage a diminishing resource. The drought was the catalyst, to be very frank with you, but what it's caused is for us to permanently change the way we live here. You know, this is very unusual for our society and for the scientists in the society to be warning the society so far ahead of time. The next 25 years will bring challenges, but also opportunity. Other climate change challenges affect the workforce and how you may spend your nine to five. That story just ahead when Forecast Earth returns.